I am Dr. Troy Spurl, and our podcast is Synapse Snips. Our podcast teaches people about how the body is supposed to work, basically how we were innately made. Have you ever wondered why you get headaches? Ever wondered why you wake up and you just, your, your feet don't work in the morning and they're achy and then as you get walking, it gets better? Uh, have you ever wondered why you don't remember your dreams? Have you ever wondered why you're gaining weight even though you're eating right, you're exercising and the weight keeps coming on? Uh, have you ever wondered why you're just feeling depressed? That's hard to get up off the couch. If you ever wondered about why you feel these things and why you're not just feeling right, listen to our podcast to get the answers. We get to the root cause and we tell you why. Make sure you're listening to Synapse Snips each and every week where we answer the questions that you guys have. Also, you can find us at officialsynapse.com. That's officialsynapse, S-Y-N-A-P-S-E.com. This is Dr. Troy, and I am joined today by a very, very special guest. Uh, Liz Crokin is here, and we are hoping to have a great conversation today um, around the topic of trauma, stress. And uh, when I think about this, there's absolutely no one in the world I'd like to talk to first before Liz, <laughs> because she is such a uh, bold uh, fighter, and uh, uh, I'd like to introduce her to my uh, clientele, my people, and I have nothing but respect uh, for uh, Liz here. And so, uh, Liz, maybe you can just introduce yourself to some of the people uh, that may, maybe don't know who you are and stuff. So maybe just share a little bit of your story and we'll start there and then dive into a nice little conversation here. Hi, Dr. Troy. Thanks for having me. Um, so for people that don't know who I am, I was a, a journalist in the mainstream media for almost a full two decades until 2016 uh, slash early 17, I should say. And in late 2016, I started to expose elite pedophile rings and Pizzagate. And if you work for the mainstream media, you're not allowed to do that. So I got canceled. I got fired from jobs. You know, I got put on a blacklist the whole night. And so I had to go independent to continue the work that I wanted to do, which is exposing Pizzagate, Jeffrey Epstein, and all these elite pedophiles, because that's the one story that nobody wants to touch. And so I continued to do this work. I was in a documentary called Out of Shadows that came out in 2020, it went crazy viral that year. Over a hundred million people saw it. And you know, it woke up so many people. It was translated in 25 different languages, but it was banned everywhere. You can still watch it at outofshadows.org or into the light.movie. Yeah, that's a um, huge, huge must for the people listening. That if you haven't seen it, you have to see it. And didn't didn't Elon Musk just do something on Twitter to? Uh... Well, he he allowed us to stream it on X, so if you can you can get it on my page and Mike Smith, who's the director, on his X page as well. And and it, it you know it, it, I I was banned you know from Twitter X in 2018. So that was years before the film came out. But after the film came out, anyone that was sharing it got banned. You know, our Out of Shadows account got banned. The director got banned. We all got banned. And People were sharing it all over on TikTok, Instagram, but it, everyone, you know, they never even attempted to debunk the film. They never yeah. said that's inaccurate or that's not true or that fact's wrong. They just, because they couldn't, everything we put in there was 100% factual. So all they could do was shut us down and silence us. And so that's what they did. But Elon brought us back earlier this year. And so, in this film, though, I talk about what Pizzagate is, the Podesta emails and elite pedophile rings. And I lay it out for everyone because the media has been covering up Pizzagate for many years and are lying about it. So that's just kind of a short version of, you know, my work as a journalist and my background, my, my professional background. However, one of the reasons why I got into the journalism exposing elite pedophile rings and child sex trafficking is because I was a victim of physical, emotional, and sexual abuse. And actually, a lot of people who follow me and have had followed me for years were not familiar with my story. 
This is something that happened to me well over a decade ago. And I have talked a, a lot about it in the past, but you know, recently I just, I've made peace with it and I, I haven't talked a lot about it. And, and I also just don't want it to distract from the work that I'm doing. Yeah. But because of the, like I said, emotional, physical and sexual abuse that I went through um, after being in a relationship with someone that I thought was a good person and I had trusted, I struggled for many years with medical problems and very bad PTSD because of that. On the flip side, it lit a fire inside me and it is where my passion comes from to help sex crime survivors. And so because of those horrible experiences in my life, that's why I decided to become a fighter and an advocate, particularly for victims of sexual abuse, rape, sex trafficking, and child sexual abuse and satanic ritualistic abuse. So yeah. that is why I was inspired to help other victims. And that's why I continue to be an advocate and a journalist who's exposing crimes against children. Yeah, one of the few, one of the very, very few, especially in the last couple of years. So um, that's why I'm just honored to, to have you on here today because um, I mean, Correct me if I'm wrong. I I know your story. I know a lot of what you've been through. But uh, you you got canceled, like you said. But they just don't. It's not just a canceling. I mean, there it, it relationships are impacted and affected, and so there's loss all over the place after you've already been through a lot of of other other factors. And so, for for me here in the healthcare world, I was introduced to this arena, if you will, by patients coming in. Uh, who have been sexually abused and and recently just a lot of uh, PTSD from from uh, ritual abuse from satanic uh, worshiping and, and th like sacrificing some of the stories I mean they're horrible I don't want to get into the details uh, uh, per se but uh, a lot of good people don't realize the a lot of the evils that are done to kids in particular and and uh, to people and just the trauma that uh, has uh, occurred so we've had to to work a lot with uh, with trauma here with our patients and and doing it approaching it from a mental chemical and physical um, background and spiritual uh, component is what we've always kind of done so this is one of the reasons why Liz and I are kind of teaming up here to talk about it because there's no one better than Liz to kind of get the message out and I want I want people to really hear that there are solutions um, to this. And and as as rough as COVID was, uh, the same thing happened during COVID in the healthcare world that happened to you when you tried to come out and and reveal the truth. Yeah. Um, they just shut everything down. They didn't want to hear it, and facts didn't matter. They kept saying, "Trust the science, trust the science," but they weren't looking at the science, and they wouldn't talk to us about the science. So same same idea, same concept. Um, so I, I do have a question for you. Mm -hmm. When it comes to um, the, just the the trauma of uh, and people overcoming trauma, because s somehow, some way, you are navigating through it. What are some of the keys that people can do when it comes to overcoming trauma in their in their life personally? And then just some of the people that have followed you. I'm sure you've heard some pretty horrific stories. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in in the beginning, when I was dealing with PTSD and what comes with PTSD is a lot of anxiety and depression and, you know, for some people, insomnia and things like that. But when I years ago, when my PTSD was really bad, I, I just I remember there was one incident that happened because I was pursuing civil and criminal charges against the person that hurt me. And there was one incident where something came up that triggered me so bad where i was just i was actually dating someone new a good person at the time um but i was dating someone new and i, I he didn't live in the same city as me and when this incident came up i could not leave the bedroom for dates 
and I, you know, I, I was so, my PTSD was so bad. I felt paralyzed. I couldn't move. And I'd never felt anything like that in my life. It was awful. Um, and so I, the new, the new guy that was in at the time, he ended up getting me a dog um, that we got registered and certified um, for PTSD because when I was going through like some of the worst periods of my life with the PTSD, we would babysit the neighbor's dog and he would notice how immediately like my anxiety and my stress level would go down because I was around this dog that made me so happy. Wow. So, so the dog helped, but what I have also found for me in terms of the PTSD, stress, anxiety, the number one activity that I can do that's best for me to lower my anxiety and to lower my depression and to get out of that bad PTSD space has always been not just working out, high impact working out. So I'm a runner and I also do spin classes. And I felt that through the darker, you know, days of my recovery, it was the running and then going to the spin classes, which gave me a sense of community too, right? Yep. And with me, my body, if I'm having, you know, like if I'm triggered, my PTSD is triggered or I'm having anxiety, depression or stress, let's say it's at a 10. I go for a five mile run or go to a spin class, it'll immediately go down to a six or a five. Yeah. It never fails. Now, sometimes it's not easy to get to the gym because a lot of times when you have an anxiety attack, you can't breathe. Yes. You know? But if you can just get there and, and then if you can't run, walk or go for a walk outside, I have found that that probably helps me the most when I'm dealing with an anxiety attack, something triggers my PTSD and or depression. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this opportunity to explain why that works. So uh, a lot of my listeners have have heard me over the years. My favorite area of the brain is the basal ganglia because it sets the tone for muscles and emotions mm -hmm. and the idle speed for anxiety and depression. And you just said it beautifully there. Um, when people have stress, that's why their muscles get tight. And so when you have a panic attack, it's hard to breathe because your diaphragm, which is a muscle, kind of contracts. Mm -hmm. And so you have to breathe through the nose, but you have to get that muscle to relax, to allow the breathing to happen. Mm -hmm. Number one. Number two, if that area of the brain is wound up, going and exercising helps you uh, reset how that area of the brain is. It brings it back into balance. So all of a sudden you get out of an anxious state and more into a balanced state. But it, it's the weirdest thing because when that area of the brain gets firing too high, it's like you have anxiety and depression at the same time it's physically hard to get up off the couch there's depressed function to go and move to go to the gym to do the workout but when you do the benefit is such that you get a balance in that area of the brain so i really want people to hear that because many of these people uh, won't feel motivated to get up off the couch to go do right. the exercise the run but once you start uh, it, it's it's a huge payoff and that's one of the things that's why I give you a lot of credit and benefit because because you develop that habit and um, have gotten very good at it and and so that that um, for people just to hear that one thing it's so so important and I had a patient years ago I've said this I think on a, a podcast you and I did uh, a ways back but um, I had a patient years ago that was in Scotland and uh, had uh, got triggered and called me from Scotland and I had him right there on the street, just drop and start doing push-ups to physically get active again and, and get the diaphragm engaged. And it, it took the panic attack away. And so um, it completely uh, works to actually start using those muscles. So know your body, but when you talk about that, that high impact thing, mm -hmm. it's one of, the, one of the best things you can do. Well, and can you also explain, because for me, and maybe it's different for other people, but you know, the low impact activity, and I'm not saying it's bad, but for, because I think any kind of exercise is, is good, but for me to really lower the anxiety and, you know, and, and to get out of a state of feeling 
depressed and sad. I need my heart rate up as high as yeah. possible. I need to do sprints. I need to run. I need to do a spin class that just kicks my butt. I need to sweat. You know, if I do some kind of weightlifting class or whatever, where it's not high impact and my heart rate's not really getting high and I'm not sweating, then it doesn't have the same effect as something that's super high impact where my heart rate is going up and I'm sweating and burning a ton of calories. That's to me is that's where I feel that the endorphins are going. And then also yeah. as, as a writer, even if I'm not depressed, let's say I'm not struggling with depression or PTSD or anxiety, let's say I'm having a good day. I found that when I go for a long run or spin and I'm on the treadmill, that's when the best ideas come to my head. Like I, I will write whole articles in my head. I'm not kidding you as I'm running, because it, it, I really feel that I get clarity in my brain and the best, like if I'm struggling to come up with, for example, like a headline for an article I just wrote, and I can't think of a good headline, I start running and then all the ideas start coming. So yeah. maybe you can explain like what chemically is happening when you do the high impact. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that was very loaded what you had there. There's three different things to comment mm -hmm. on. The first thing is, um, there's our, there are thresholds. So with that area of the brain, the basal ganglia, if you don't do enough to breach that threshold, it doesn't activate and start. So you can do all you want, but you have to break the threshold. So all of us though have different thresholds. So people who haven't had a PTD, PTSD experience, their threshold might be very low. So low impact exercise, it doesn't take much for them to get the same benefit, but people who have had extreme emotional uh, things happen in their life, their levels that are usually up here. So they do have to breach that. So that's one thing. The second thing is that uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about fight or flight, but you just said it. If you're actively in fight or flight, you do have to get that heart rate up. And there's this zone um, where you're, when your heart rate is at the right place and you release adren adrenaline, the fight or flight hormone mm -hmm. at the right time, you get clarity. Yep. And this clarity comes with it. And so um, there's a great book written years ago. I can't remember the name of it, but uh, they spoke about that where they had police officers and they measured um, their their adrenaline uh, during a, a, a shootout. And there was a police officer who was able to say where every bullet was flying past him because he had so much clarity and it, because his heart rate was up and everything mm -hmm. like that. So fascinating research on that. But when you get to that point, that area of the brain actually becomes very, very balanced, the basal ganglia. And you're not in what we, you're not in a state of fear. And so when you're in that state, it's actually a calming state. And when you're in that calm state, then all of a sudden an area of the brain called the prefrontal cortex, which is our problem solving part of the brain becomes active. So that's when inspiration can hit. So what you're doing is actually releasing the blocks from the PTSD trauma and, and we all have it. So even though you've been through a lot, we all walk around with mild forms of PTSD when, or right. it's often called emotional baggage. Well, anyone that's turned on the news, I mean, geez, you just turn on the news and it's like, you got PTSD because yeah. it's so doom and gloom and everything's so depressing. I know. Yeah. These days you, it just takes two minutes on your cell phone to, to start looking at stuff and, and you instantly get yeah. it. So uh, yeah, so what you did is one of our problem solving uh, techniques that we use with uh, with people, especially if you feel blocked. So for authors and writers to feel blocked, mm -hmm. that's one of the techniques they've, they've used in the past. But even when it comes to like problem solving for um, uh, different emotional things, and this is why, this is why I tell, told people all through COVID, you can't be fearful of the virus. If you live in fear, you're yeah. blocking your problem solving ability which yeah. is what we saw with people who are walking around with masks and all this mm -hmm. other stuff that were ineffective um, and they're, they're operating out of fear. Well, you can't see the solution when you're stuck in that fear. So that, that is a, also a big, big uh, um, win for what you just. Oh, absolutely. And Dr. Troy, I will add, I do feel, and I don't know if this is because I've been through trauma and I struggle, I've struggled with PTSD or maybe this is just something that I've always dealt with. And I think that a lot of people, do struggle with looping sometimes and kind of sweating on the small stuff. Yeah. And I know that 
when I do my workouts before, you know, if I'm looping on something, you know, or someone said something mean to me or, you know, or just did something bad to me, or, you know, maybe made a comment or whatever, I will sometimes loop. And then when I go work out, it's like, I get off that treadmill and it's like, who cares? It's yep. not that bad. You know, like th this, is, this is so insignificant. You know, I, I do feel that when you work out and open up your brain like that and get the heart rate going, it takes you to a place where you can see, not only just see clear, but you also are less likely to sweat on the small stuff, loop, dwell on things. Yeah, that's a really good point because what you said there is very true, but you also, when you can see things more clear, you then, there's an action step everyone has to do. You have to choose to do something. And some people choose to be resentful still, Right. But some people choose to forgive. And we have found that all healing starts with forgiveness. When people have a lack of forgiveness, when they have resentment built up, literally their cells will fold over and uh, they won't allow the nutrients to come into the cells. So people who live in fight or flight, and the worst, worst part of this is fear and then fight or flight. Mm -hmm. And so we see that the cells really fold over. And then the receptors that are there don't actually take the minerals in. We see this also with people with sleep disorders and other um, uh, more stressful scenarios, like people who have uh, high demands or they're putting too much pressure. So the second part of it, is, number one, forgiveness. Number two, surrender. Exactly what you just said. So we, this is where for me, faith comes in to, to help us scientifically because you have to surrender what you can't control. So by forgiving the people that have wronged you, and then surrendering a little bit, you actually operate more from your strengths and our cells start to open up. And there's great research that shows that people who live in a state of fear and anger, and anger is just an extreme form of resentment, but fear and anger, their cells fold over. And people who operate in a state of love, joy, and hope, their cells are wide open. So then if you combine that with a good diet and lifestyle, then we start to see a lot of the healing effects and impact on the body just start to blossom and that's really kind of the the key to what we what we work on here in the healthcare field in the functional medicine world and it's how our healthcare system should be but i'm a little biased um you you got to experience a little bit here at the uh, synapse yeah. but maybe you can speak to that a little bit well so i just so everyone that is listening right now i just want to emphasize how profound what dr troy just said was so what he is saying is that there's proven science that has showed that when you live in a state of fear and anger and resentment, it sh there's proof that it affects the body in a negative way. And yeah. what I love about what Dr. Troy does is because he comes he looks at your health from every single different angle including from a faith-based angle and when you hear people say you know forgive 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 a lot of people really struggle with forgiveness and, and trust me i understand that like there's a lot of people that have been very horrible things to me that i really don't want to forgive and one of the most important things that you've said to me which I have always, I've, I've always tried to live by, and I think is so true, is that you have to forgive the people that have hurt you, not not for them, for yeah. you, because when you don't forgive, it's hurting your body, not just in a mental way, but in a physical way as well, and the science proves that, and that's yeah. why forgiving people and not holding on to that anger is so important and what also dr troy said to me when we had a session our last session together which was so important to me is that just because you forgive someone does not mean that you have to stop pursuing justice right you can still pursue justice against someone that may have hurt you committed a crime against you you know or whatever and you could forgive them at the same time and that to me was so profound you know the people that have hurt me i have forgiven them 
But I also, at the same point in time, pursued justice against them. And there's many people that have hurt me over the years, you know, for doing the work that I've yeah. done. You know, like, you know, that I've been involved in litigation with the Hyatt Hotel and, and it, it's been it, it's actually been out for a while. But the Epstein files recently came out and they continue to come out. And the chairman of the Hyatt Hotel, Tom Pritzker, you know, he was accused of raping one of Jeffrey Epstein's victims. Well, this company has been using lawfare tactics against me for years yeah. to make my life a living a living hell. So. I'm, I've been pursuing legal justice against them for years. Do I forgive them for what they've done to me? Yes. Does that mean I'm going to stop pursuing justice against them? No. So that's the difference. And that's one of the most important things that I think that, you know, I learned from you and that people can learn from you is you got to forgive for you. Yeah. hundred percent. And, and uh, because if you just, you know, for, for there are times when you forgive and you forget, meaning you move on because it doesn't serve you anymore. But what you're also doing, God equipped you in a certain way to be able to do what you're doing. This is how I know you're the only one, Liz, doing what you're doing. You're the mm -hmm. only one. And so that's why I know you are equipped to actually be doing what you're doing. That's why you have to press on and do the work because you're not just serving and doing this for yourself right now. You're literally doing it for millions of, of kids, uh, men and women who have been through it, uh, been through the abuse. So that's why, but for you, and, and I, I, I say this, I work with a lot of people within the reawaken America tour and a lot of people that are trying to really wake people up to what's been going on. And I feel that my task and I've been equipped is to help the people helping the people. Mm -hmm. And so that's really what, what we're here for. So, Absolutely. yeah, so that, that is well said. And, um, yeah, that is, is, it's really important because a lot of times people don't forgive because they say, well, that's like me saying they won or they're right. Mm -hmm. That's not true at all. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, great. Uh, any other uh, comments or anything else that you want to share before? Well, I just, do you want to talk, just, you know, kind of walk through people like, you know, the therapy that you did with oh. me and, you know, like I'm an open book. So I, sure. you can share, you know, what you learned. Um, Cause I want people, I want to be able to help other people, you know, so yeah. do you want to walk through that and explain what you do and, and what you did with me yeah so um first of all uh we just liz and i were just talking and so liz is very very healthy uh but when we assess the body we're looking at functionally what's working what's not working and so we do some different tests uh to see if people are actively in fight or flight or in rest and digest you, you can be in fight or flight and rest and digest and we're meant to be in both but you can't be mm -hmm. in both at the same time so we don't want to live in fight or flight too often so people who have gone through any type of PTSD generally are operating in a fight or flight state dominantly. So it, it, throughout the day, they have a bunch of things that we call triggers and some of them manifest really, really big and you end up in bed like, like for three, five days. And then some of them are just little zingers throughout the day that you can't really tell, but they're, they're kind of zapping your energy. They're kind of depleting you. It's like having one part of your brain say, go, go, go. And another part says, stop, stop, stop. It's like driving a car with one foot on the gas, one foot on the brake all the time. It's hard on the body, wear and tear. So with, with you, Liz, we, we check that. And um, truthfully, I thought I would find a lot more because of how much you've been through. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but um, there was only a little bit of trigger. So we, we identified some triggers. We call them clearings here. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so we use a physical technique to reset the emotional trigger. So if you, again, you remember the basal ganglia, it sets the tone for muscles and emotions. Mm -hmm. You used muscles to help with your emotional state. Well, that's what this technique does, but we use a certain eye movement and we use your muscles to help reset how your brain perceives that emotional um, state. And I'm going to spend just a little bit of time on how that technique uh, was developed. It happened um, years ago now. I want, I want to say about 15 years ago. But I was contacted from uh, Afghanistan, from um, uh, an army base, and they got my name from one of my other patients. 
and it was the wife uh, who was calling, and she said her husband basically was injured in the war. He ran into a tent, hit his head, going into the tent, got a concussion, and then that night found out that his newborn baby son back home in the United States may not make it through the night. So that physical trauma combined with that emotional trauma, he woke up the next day kind of frozen stiff. And she was ex explaining it to me, and I said, it sounds like the area of the brain called the basal ganglia, which I knew a lot about and loved because it was my favorite area of the brain. And then I heard a bunch of laughing, and it turns out I was on speakerphone, and it was the other doctors, uh, the medical doctors that were treating him, um, didn't necessarily agree with what I had to say. So I said, am I on speakerphone? She said, yes. I said, can you just pick up? And so she picked up and I said, uh, just get a PET scan. If I'm right, it'll show positive. A PET scan is like a MRI that shows blood flow. Mm -hmm. So he had been in that state for a year. So frozen stiff for a year already. So just like your, your five day episode, he had a, a full one year episode and wow. he had locked in syndrome at that point. And so I didn't think anything of it. I was busy with patients. Another year goes by and all of a sudden my staff comes and says, we have a call from Germany. They say it's urgent. So I go and I answer the phone and it's his wife again. And she says, they thought you were nuts. The U.S. Army um, doctors there just thought I was kind of a wacko type of thing. And they thought it was some type of chemical warfare or something like that. So they just did a, a PET scan a week prior to that. It showed hyperactive basal ganglia, exactly what I was thinking. And she said, so the U.S. Army is flying him to your clinic. Wow. Um, so then I said to her, or I said to myself, well, I know what area of the brain it was. It doesn't mean I know how to fix it. And so whenever I get stuck, and this is the general rule for everyone, if you get stuck, ask a better question. Ask yourself, ask God. So mm -hmm. I... I went in the shower and I prayed and it's the first time I ever prayed for something and got an instant download. Kind of like what you're talking about when you're running on the treadmill. Right. It was instantaneous and it was a download about a certain area of the brain to check on him and don't stop was basically what, what came. And so he came in I went and saw him on a Saturday because I didn't know what to expect. And <clears throat> I started working on this area of the brain and when I did, he started moving his fingers and I asked the wife, has he been able to do that? She said, no. So we kept going, kept going. Four hours into it, we did the technique that uh, we, we did with you, which is now a 30 second technique for each trigger. And he jumped off the table, clapped his hands and said, okay, what's next? And it was, he, he wow. just started walking. Hadn't walked in two years like that. Oh we, were all, we were all crying and stuff. And it was a very miraculous thing. But he got on an airplane to fly back to South Dakota, where he was from, and he he said something. Um, he said, once the engine of the plane started, it's as if my body remembered the vibration of the plane. He started to tremor and then went right back into that frozen state. So they turned the plane around. He came back, and the short version of the story is it was like a trigger. Every mm -hmm. sensory experience he had had, we had to reset. And so I'd show him um, a picture of his son and he'd go back into that frozen state. And then we do the technique, take 30 seconds and then show him the picture. And then he was fine. It took three months to identify all of the triggers he had had over the two years. At that point, I started to test my general population to see if we were walking around with mild forms of post-traumatic stress disorder. And it turns out we are. Yep. And so that's that's when I started implementing it into my daily uh, routine. And that's what we found found with yourself. And um, this is also how I know, Liz, you were meant to be doing what you're doing, because once we cleared up one of the triggers, it had like a downstream effect. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden the muscle tone changed. And I don't know if you remember, but we, we assess it by checking the muscle behind your knee. Mm -hmm. and it can be really sensitive and it can and it can uh, sometimes hurt and tickle. We actually call it a turt, a tickle hurt. And, uh, and yours improved instantly. So that's a sign of someone who actually has a good brain and good communication. And ultimately, all we are doing is helping to restore the natural God-given communication that's supposed to happen that gets disrupted by these traumas. And one of the things that blocks the traumas, like we said, is lack of forgiveness. Um, uh, these other, these other um, like anger, resentment, or living in that state. So the people that I... We do this technique on it it generally only requires one treatment and it's done unless their mindset is not right 
or if they're if we reset stuff because of they're in an abusive relationship and they're still in that abusive relationship it can come mm -hmm. back so it, it becomes something that you can um definitely recover from and work on but but your mindset's so crucial going going forward and that's why the forgiveness uh but also leading with forgiveness but staying on purpose is really important and that's Absolutely. what you're just describing so there really isn't anything i mean you're an open book like you said there really isn't anything too too um outrageous to state because you responded really well mm -hmm. you did a really good job and we only had to reset it once which tells me too that people people who actively work on different things um that's good and you want you want to keep going it's those little things that sneak in that uh, can be very very uh detrimental but getting those triggers identified and then sometimes people don't know what they are so we actually used a technique to identify and i think you were even surprised a, a couple times where you thought something was going to be a trigger but it wasn't and right then something else was a trigger and you didn't think that it would have been and it ended up being a big deal and we see that a lot we actually see that quite a bit absolutely yeah and so do you want to just kind of discuss like you know like where people can find you and how people you know can get help from you and and you know you and i kind of discussed maybe one day we'll do a seminar or something you know to help survivors that you know are, are looking to work through you know triggers ptsd anxiety and you know all the stuff that i've been kind of you know dealing with and overcoming for years but for now like how can people find you and get resources yeah uh People can go to our website, um, www.officialsynapse.com. That's S-Y-N-A-P-S-E.com. Um, these uh, podcasts are on our media or in our media section. If you do have interest in uh, something like that, as far as a seminar with Liz and I, then just uh, also mention that to us so we can gauge some of the interest on that and some of the need because um, I just personally have a feeling that 2024 is going to be the starting point of a lot of stuff coming out, uh, at which you'll be at the forefront for, uh, for some of it and a lot of it. And I think people are going to need help with trauma. So if that's something that, uh, you, uh, anyone listening to this has an interest in, just let us know. Cause I know Liz and I both have the heart to, to help people. Mm -hmm. Um, Liz definitely is, it's, it's more obvious that you've been all in for a while, but, uh, yeah. I wrote. I wrote on my wall 20 years ago to become a worldwide agent of change in the fields of healthcare and human potential. And so this is, this is the year we were, we're, we're, we've been brought together for a reason I feel. And so, um, yeah, let us know, uh, we're here to, we're here to help you. And then for my listeners, Liz, how do they, uh, reach you as far as, uh, um, hearing more of what, uh, you have to say and what you've done and, yeah, everyone, you can find all my content on LizCroken.net. So the Out of Shadows documentary, there's a link to it there. My sub stack, which has all the information on Pizzagay, including the Podesta emails. And some, some of my video reports are on Rumble. You can find all of the links to everything that I have in terms of social media, Rumble, all that stuff um, on LizCroken.net. My store is there as well. I do most of my posting these days on X, which is at Liz Crokin. But yeah, definitely, you know, reach out to Dr. Troy through his website if you would be interested in us doing some kind of seminar or whatnot to help people overcome, you know, PTSD. I will say that the other day I did a post on X, you know, talking about, you know, the abuse that I've overcome in my personal life and I wasn't going to post about it, but then all the, you know, some of these shills started trying to attack me about my past and rewrite my story and just flat out lie about it. And yeah. I'm like, no, this is the one I'm not going to let them tell my survivor story and, right. and, and lie about it and mock it. You know, I went through some horrific abuse and I'll be damned if anyone's going to tell my story for me. So I was like, oh, I really don't <laughs> address this, but I will because, and you know what? I, I think that it's really going to help people. So I might as well just do a post because I, I got a lot of new followers last year that didn't know my story. So I did the post and let me tell you, there were a lot of people, well, there were tons of people that, you know, 
either comment underneath it or, or sent me a direct message saying, thank you for sharing this. I'm a survivor of, you know, this or that. But there were some people that told me that my post triggered a memory for them that they weren't aware of, of some kind of abuse that they had gone through. Yeah. And so, you know, now with the disclosure with the Epstein files that are just starting, and I think there's going to be a lot of disclosure this year, not just with Jeffrey Epstein and his ring, with all kinds of, you know, horrific things that have gone on, you know, with the trafficking of children and, yeah. and just really bad stuff. That stuff going more mainstream is probably going to be triggering a lot of memories for people who are survivors. You know, um, there's a lot of survivors that don't have memories of the abuse for many years. And then, you know, years later, something triggers the memories and then, and then it all floods back. So there's going to be a lot of people that I think are going to need help with how to deal with the PTSD, how to deal with the triggers and, and whatnot. So, you know, if you guys feel that there, that you guys could be, could benefit from us doing a seminar together or, or just more of these videos to let us know, um, but just know that you're not alone, you know, yeah. and, you know, I, I've been through a lot and, you know, I've overcame a lot and it, it, it's, it's not an easy road when you've gone through any kind of abuse, but you're not alone and, you know, you can't overcome it. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I just, I thank God for you, Liz. And I thank God for the idea of you, Liz, just because there's so many people that need someone to kind of be out front and it's uh, trust me people it's the last thing she wants to be doing oh, <laughs> it's, it, it's it the last thing she just like everyone else we just want to enjoy life so i just thank uh thank you for coming on sharing your story and i look forward to uh being a part of impacting as many people as possible and i just want to again thank you and to everyone else uh stay tuned there'll be more coming love you guys god bless you all